So, so far we've taken uh, 1,080 grams of sterling and we dissolved it in nitric acid and uh, distilled water, so dilute nitric acid. Uh, evaporated that solution down to 3,000 milliliters, three liters. Uh, what we want to do now is add nine milliliters of sulfuric acid. I typically add around one, you know, three milliliter uh, pipette per liter. So I'll add three pipettes of sulfuric acid. And the point here would be is if there's any lead, we'll precipitate that out and we're going to filter one more time. All right, so far we've dissolved 1,080 grams of sterling in nitric acid, and my goal was to get 1,000 grams or roughly 1,000 grams of silver when I'm done. And we've divided this into three separate beakers. There's one liter of solution in each beaker, and I'm projecting then about 330 grams or so in each beaker. So I'm going to measure how much hydrochloric acid that I use, and I'm also going to experiment with different ways of getting the hydrochloric acid into the uh, nitric solution. Since I've calculated there's 333 grams of silver in here, I'm going to start with 330 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So as I drip in the hydrochloric acid, I'll stir the solution and I can feel the silver chloride being formed on the stir bar. I can also see it as well. So I'll continue to drip in the hydrochloric acid into the silver nitrate solution until no more silver chloride forms. All right, so in this first beaker, we have our silver chloride that's now precipitated out, and it starts to turn gray. This has settled overnight uh, due to the light. So, um, you know, if you were to stir this up, it's going to be a, a layer around the outside here that just kind of turns gray. So now that we can be fairly certain on the amount of hydrochloric acid that we should add to our silver nitrate, for this experiment, instead of dripping it in through an addition funnel, we're just going to go ahead and pour it in at a kind of moderate pace and just go ahead and get it all in there. Now we'll just go ahead and give this a stir. So here is my preferred way of adding the hydrochloric acid to the silver nitrate solution is to just set up a mechanical overhead mixer and it's not um, it's not necessary but it is important in the next step because we'll be adding sugar to this solution and sugar is really sticky so a mechanical mixer works the best to get a complete reaction and as long as I'm setting this equipment up I just like to use it here so I measured out at 240 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We'll go ahead and just manually enter that in.
So I'm going to go ahead and filter all this off camera, but I wanted to point out a few things. This is the best separation point. So if you're going for three nines purity, you want to um, filter this solution and rinse with hot distilled water until there's absolutely no more color in your silver chloride. So what I plan to do is I'm going to measure out about four to 500 milliliters of silver chloride into this one liter beaker and we'll get a wet weight. Um, and I'm just picking an arbitrary number to start with so we can start to calculate the amount of sodium hydroxide we'll need per milliliter of wet weight silver chloride. And this is just distilled water from my very last rinse and it's perfectly clear. So as you rinse your silver chloride for three nines fine silver, you'll want your wastewater this clear. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add the silver chloride into this 5 liter beaker here. Next, I'm going to weigh out 500 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now here I use store-bought sodium hydroxide, so it does have some iron in it. And to get that out, I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide. I'll put the formula up on the screen for how I calculate how much to use. And now I'm going to dissolve the 500 grams of sugar with distilled water. And while our sugar is dissolving, we'll just set that aside and we'll go ahead and start our sodium hydroxide drip. All right, so I just want to talk real quick about why I set this experiment up this way. So lye and sugar. To convert your silver chloride, it's kind of an explosive reaction. If you add the chemicals in dry and you add them in kind of quick, um, this reaction is exothermic and actually adding the sugar, you kind of get a volatile reaction and it can uh, bubble out um, and kind of create a mess. So one of the things I'm trying to figure out in this experiment is how to limit some of those factors um, and also narrow in on exactly how much reagent we need for each step. So here we have 800 milliliters of 1200 milliliters total. So we dissolved 500 grams of sodium hydroxide with distilled water into 1200 milliliters of distilled water and we'll drip that in to our silver chloride. This conversion will turn the silver chloride into silver oxide and by adding the sugar, we'll then push that reaction all the way to uh, getting our silver metal out. So let's go ahead and get the stir bar turned on.
Next, I'm going to turn the mixer off and we'll split this solution into two beakers. Now we'll go ahead and pour off the majority of this solution and add a little bit of fresh water to it. The reason for a little additional water is it will help alleviate a little bit of this next reaction, which is even more uh, volatile. We're going to go ahead and add the sugar now into here, so we'll get this stir, stirring again. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll start to drip in this sugar water. I just added about one liter of distilled water and turned the heat up to 270 degrees Fahrenheit. And the purpose there is we're going to clean off our beaker a little bit and we're going to run this until this mirroring kind of goes away. And now that we've filtered the silver perfectly clear, we're ready to melt it up. So I'll put the silver on a little bit of low heat. We'll go ahead and melt up a bar and get it tested to make sure we've got three nines fine silver.